Exhibiting artists are tackling issues like the climate crisis, sexism, consumerism and migration. But the event is also said to be the art fair of superlatives, attracting the super rich of the world. And many art magazines and critics are focusing on the jaw-dropping price tags. There are multi-million dollar paintings and installations here. And next week, critics expect an artistic shopping spree for collectors. Let's cross over to Miami Beach now. Art advisor Monika Kalpakian joins us there. Hi, Monika. Thank you so much for coming on our show today. So this year, the astronomical price tags are on the forefront. But do you feel like it is a bit different this year than previous editions? I think that every year Miami Beach brings a lot of people to Miami, attracting uh, people from all over the world and... Uh, galleries from everywhere bring their best work to showcase and teach and educate people that are not used to the art world. So in this way, they get to to see the world. They people ask a lot of questions. It's different for people that don't go to galleries often, and in this way, they get to to see the work. Ask. Why are those price tags? Why are people doing the work that they're doing? So I, I read an online comment, for example, saying that it feels like a mall. The focus on money, money is so much that it's almost annoying and irritating for some people. Do you feel like it is the case? Yes, of course. I tend not to buy in art fairs. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but um, yes, in general, it, it feels like a, a market. I prefer to go and buy from artists themselves. I like, I follow artists as they come out of college and the young ones and then follow their career. And this is a better way to know the artists, to know what they're thinking, why they're doing the work that they're doing, mm -hmm. what's in their head, what is their, their, the problems that they're trying to evolve and, and that why the work is what they're doing. And Monica, and what you're saying is not really uh, secret knowledge. I mean, everyone sort of knows that uh, art fairs are usually like full of superlative prices. So why are people actually going there and buying art for really astronomical price tags? Like, I don't know, $120,000 for a banana. <laughs> you know, art is all about provocation and it's all about what happens in the world. So if you think of a banana in the world, right, you would think how ridiculous is that? What makes you think? to you personally, is that ridiculous? It makes you angry, how, which we're wasting money in this stupidity, how banal. So what does that make you think about the world is exactly what's happening in the world. There's, there's people that are dying of hunger and there's people that are wasting money and, and a jewelry that they're gonna wear, wear one time and it's cost millions. So this is the polarity that we live in life today and this is what art is representing also. It's a cry for reality that artists do in their work and is what you see. It's, it's always about politics, it's always about inequality, it's always about the polarity, mm -hmm. about black and white, us, them, or the bad other. And this Okay, Monica, I know you're an art collector as well, apart from being an, being an art advisor. Would you give that much money to a banana taped on a wall? Of course I wouldn't. I always <laughs> try to buy art that is meaningful, that it makes me think about something or gives the viewer an emotion that you wouldn't be able to get some other way. Art can make you wonder, can make you feel, can make you think something you hadn't thought before. And the artist is gifting you with his thought and his thought process and evolution. He's making you feel or think something as a gift that you hadn't been, puts you in a place that you weren't there before. Okay, so, so let's talk about Art Basel Miami Beach for, for a second, because I feel like there are fewer than 100 galleries that are doing the major art fairs around the world, and it almost feels yeah. like a copy-paste sometimes, like when you look at art fairs. So I wonder what you feel like sets Art Basel Miami Beach apart, or maybe there's nothing setting it apart. What do you think? 
Okay, so um, the thing is that in the past, there were very little art fairs and we used to buy directly from the gallery. So there's two things. There's primary market and secondary market. In the primary market, you buy directly from the artist that gave the work to a gallery. So it's a first-hand experience, but you really have to know what you're buying. You People are intimidated to go in a gallery. Let's say that you it's the first time that you go and buy art. You cannot go and spend days and days and days going from one gallery to the other everywhere in the world and finding out. So what happens? The art fair gives you one experience of going one day and seeing the best that each gallery has to offer from everywhere in the world. So it gives you the opportunity of seeing everything in one only place, right? The thing is that as everything in life, when something becomes lucrative, uh, people exaggerate. And uh, they started being too many art fairs and now it is cut uh, and paste, like you say, so we have to edit. And there's the role of the advisor also, because not every gallery is good. Not all yeah. the art from one gallery is good either. Monica Kalpakian, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. <laughs>